All right. Welcome, everybody, back to another episode of The Blind Spot, where we talk with blind athletes reaching excellence. I am your host, Kyle Kuhn, USABA program and safe sport coordinator. Whoo, guys, we are uh, just chugging right along. We're now in the month of August. We are just a mere 22 days from the, uh, or, or are we 23 or are we 21 days? I, I think we're like exactly three weeks from the opening ceremonies of the, of the Paralympics. And, and uh, guys, we've only got just a, just two or three more uh, blind spot interviews with our uh, Paralympic goalball team members uh, coming up this week and next week. But as always, guys, um, stay tuned to the USABA uh, social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, um, as we're always pushing out new content, um, you know, with our 45 year anniversary uh, this year, 45 years in existence, my goodness gracious. Um, and in addition, um, you know, coming down the home stretch in our 100 Days to Tokyo campaign as well, uh, be sure to check that out at usaba.donordrive.com. But, you know, as, as always, guys, I could prattle on and on and on about all the things that are going on. But the reason you guys tuned in today uh, was to meet yet another blind athlete that uh, has reached quite a bit of excellence and is continuing to just go above and beyond. I am so excited to chat with Miss Lisa Chakowsky today, a six-time Paralympian and four-time Paralympic medalist. So, Lisa, welcome to the Blind Spot. How's it going? <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. Thanks for having me. Super excited to be here. Absolutely, absolutely. So, I mean, you know, you're the. Uh, I mean, let's let's be honest. You're the, you're the veteran on, uh, you know, on the entire team, both the men's and the women's side. Six-time Paralympian. Um, you you've been doing this since you know, I, I, th I think Sydney was your first games. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And actually Asia and I are, are the dual veterans. Um, Asia Miller is a six time Paralympian as well. We both uh, started with the games in Sydney, Australia. Wow. So, and, and I want to actually go back to, um, you know, I, I want to touch on that um, here, here in just a, in just a minute, but why don't we just give the, um, you know, give the audience a little bit of, uh, a little bit of your background. Let's, um, you know, why, why don't you tell us a little bit about your, your eye condition and, and how you kind of found your way to the, you know, the Paralympic life, um, uh, you know, pursuing Paralympic sport. Sure. Thanks, Kyle. Um, my visual condition is called cone rod dystrophy. Um, but I wasn't initially diagnosed with that. Um, I was born and diagnosed with, uh, nystagmus and a chromostopia. Um, and so as a, as a baby, they knew that the nystagmus was, was very evident. Um, and then as, because my eyes would constantly move uh, involuntarily. And then as I got a little bit older, I was very light sensitive. And um, that's when they proceeded to figure out that I had the achromostopia, um, which, also led to them figuring out eventually I was not only having an, a problem with my acuity and light sensitivity, but uh, color blindness. So <laughs> um, a couple of things happened, you know, happened as I was going into school that they, they finally kind of figured, put it all together and figured out that there was some issue. Um, and then in uh, kind of in middle school, they, I saw a specialist and they were concerned about some graininess in the back of my retina, which led to the new diagnosis of actually cone dystrophy. Um, and so cone dystrophy is a, you know, a progressive disorder where my cones deteriorate. Um, and I, I don't, I, I currently, I don't have any cone function function whatsoever. So I don't have any central vision. I'm totally colorblind. I'm light sensitive. I lack depth perception. <laughs> um, and so, and then the nystagmus has definitely kind of calmed down quite a bit. Um, and then, uh, a few years ago, I was recently diagnosed, I guess, with cone rod dystrophy. Cause I said mm. to my, my specialist, I said, how come suddenly I'm wanting to turn on the light? That's very unlike me. I am not a fan of light, but 
but I kind of need light. So what's going on with that? And she uh. enlightened me to say, well, guess what? Your, your rods are, are now beginning the deterioration phase as well. So, oh. you know, congratulations. <laughs> um, <laughs> and not, not really congratulations, but, yeah. you know. Oh, um, yeah, totally. <laughs> it's, it's part of, uh, you know, knowing, uh, you know, having cone, cone dystrophy at first and losing all that function and then you know, adding the rod dystrophy, I'm like, okay, you know, it is, it is what it is, you know? And, uh, so I do rely on that peripheral vision to, to see what I can. And, uh, you know, I love the idea of color and things, you know, color, I don't completely understand it, uh, cause I don't have any <laughs> color vision, but right. I, I, I will have appreciation for black and white TVs. Right. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that, that's kind of my, my, I condition quest, shall we say, um, yeah, yeah. you know, um, it's, it's always a journey, right? Adjustment to vision loss is a journey. And I, sure. uh, you know, goal ball has helped me to embrace that and be mm -hmm. confident mm -hmm. with whatever happens with my vision, because I've met so many, um, athletes and other coaches that have gone through vision loss and, uh, it's helped prepare me like, you know, if my vision you know, as my vision continues to deteriorate, um, and like my, I guess my entrance into goalball started, uh, when I was in high school, I was mm -hmm. sort of, I didn't do a lot of, um, athletics. I, I, I will say, honestly, I started out, um, uh, my mom put me as a child into like, you know, like a uh, little league softball and, um, <laughs> okay. like most children with a visual impairment, yeah. it was, it was rough. Um, I didn't really, I, I couldn't see the softball. And so, you know, they always encouraged me to try, but it was outside and I couldn't really see. <laughs> so yep. a lot of, a lot of effort with very little result. Um, and so I kind of shied away from any ball sport. Um, right. uh, I mean, recreationally, I grew up, I, I have two older brothers, so I play, I did play a lot of like, I tried to play a lot of basketball just in our driveway and with my friends, but never anything competitive. Um, but my mom actually thought it'd be good if I did some bowling um, in middle school. So I did about four years in a bowling league after school and, uh, I had a lot of fun. Plus it was an indoor thing. So that was really helpful for me. Um, and then, uh, I, in high school, I, I, I met some folks and, uh, some just different friends in my grade as a freshman. And, uh, one of my friends was, was talking about doing track and field and I was like, okay, well, I mean, that sounds interesting, I guess. I mean, it's a track. I mean, it's, it's round. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't need to worry about seeing something coming at me. Um, and so, so she was like, why don't you just come and give it a try? There's a winter program. And, I'll, and I was like, okay, well, all right, sure. Why not? So yeah. um, I went to a public high school and I got involved with the winter track and field program. And uh, it was a lot of fun for me. It was my first real, like, integration in into like a full inclusion, you know, able-bodied sport, you know? Yeah. And it was, it was really great because the coach, um, that I had actually, he just retired this year, <laughs> coach, ba coach Bongo. Um, he, he was really great about encouraging me. Um, I was very shy and I was mm -hmm. nervous because I'd never really done any competitive sport like that. And so he was very encouraging and supportive and helping me to just, just try it. Just it's, it's just running, you know, it's, it's just running. Yeah. So, yeah. um, and so, uh, that was really helpful. And part of my journey with that is that he, he, you know, he showed me all the different parts of track and field. So the different events, like there's not just running, there's, yeah. uh, there's hurdling, there's jumping and there's throwing events. So I got, I, I got the chance to try hurdling and that was a, that was an adventure. Um, I didn't quite realize <laughs> <laughs> how depth perception plays into hurdling. So, yeah. um, I, I tried a lot and then eventually I, I just fell too many times and right. it, it was just, you know, one of those things where I was like, you need to take a break. <laughs> and yeah. so funny enough, he sent me up to the shot put area. Cause that was the winter event for our high school program. And okay. I started doing shot put and I kind of fell in love with it, but kept doing the, the, the sprinting side. And, um, the, the thing is, is that this, you know, I started doing the winter track and doing track meets and I, I'm not like, I'm not a good runner. I'm not a good sprinter by any means. And, uh, but I was doing, it was really good for my self-confidence to be doing this competitive sport, you know, for sure. And so, um, eventually it did, uh, lead into spring track where I got introduced in the, into other events like discus 
javelin um yep. and uh continue to do the 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 sprints i'm i'm not a distance runner by any means so <laughs> um but but all this kind of led into i, I began to find some success in, mm-hmm. in 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 the track and field events and um in a fully inclusive inclusive program where I was finding uh, success amongst my able-bodied peers that could see, and it helped me to come out of my shell and feel more confident in myself and um, to see myself differently. Um, I, again, I had been very shy and always very tentative to try things and uh, competing it with my pe- with my able-bodied peers just and, and then being successful at it, I was able to obtain some success with the throwing events really helped me to, to change who I was. Um, right. But in turn, when it came down to the uh, learning about goalball, once once a year um, in New Jersey, uh, they, they had a gentleman come out. His name is Monty. Um, he was actually mm-hmm. just, indu- he was inducted into the Hall of Fame and you guys did a, a, a 45. Yes, we uh, did. 45, 45 <laughs> on him. He was actually the one who introduced <laughs> me to goalball and he had come out to talk to our, our, our gym teachers to say, hey, you have a, you know, a student who's, who's blind or they pretty much said visually impaired at that point, you know, right. visually impaired and it's okay. Like, you know, you need to, you know, do your best to include her. Um, here are some ideas, uh, you know, on how to include her and ask her certain questions, like, you know, basically helping those gym teachers find confidence in, in using, you know, finding like confidence in, you know, doing different things and finding different ideas to include me, you know? Yeah. And so in, in that, in that experience, he also met with me individually and was like, Hey, these are some of fun adaptive sports that you can do. And he showed me like, um, the, the balls, like a, a beeping ball. And he showed me, um, yeah. the big, the one I, I kind of remember the most besides goal ball was like the badminton rackets. <laughs> they were really, ah. really big and the birdie was huge. Um, oh and gosh. And it was cool. I was like, well, I still really can't see the birdie, but just the fact yeah. that the, everything was so big was, was new to me. So, yeah. Um, anyway, and he also showed me a goal ball and he's like, this is a goal ball and explained it. He asked me to roll it to him and I did. And it was pretty natural because of my bowling background. Right. <laughs> and so Monty was like, Hey, you know, there's this association for blind athletes in New Jersey and you could, you could go out and try this goal ball. And I was like, mm. I wasn't, I was not very receptive, um, okay. at all. I was, I was, again, I was finding acceptance as a, you know, a blind person amongst my sighted peers. And I thought that goal ball made me less of a, like, I, I didn't like it. Goal ball wasn't, I thought goal ball was like something that it wasn't a competitive sport, I guess, you know, right. like right. I was like, why would I, I don't understand. Like I'm competing against sighted people right now. Why would I want to compete with blind people? And, right. uh, I had no idea like what was beyond goalball, you know, honestly. And I was, you know, 13, 14 years old and just right. really excited to, to find some, some confidence, you know? Yeah. And so basically to speed up this whole part of my life, I, I went through another year of, of competitive track and field in high school, continued to find excess. Monty came back again retold me about goal ball and I was like mm, again I just I, I was like Monty I don't know about this goal ball thing like I don't get it you're taking away the vision that I worked hard to keep right yep, and yep, so yep. and so Monty took a different approach he's like listen okay I hear you you're 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 finding success in track and field and throwing great okay why don't you try to do um track and field with blind athletes and I was like all right now you're starting to talk my language <laughs> okay all right um and so he um he finally he he gave my name over to like the association of blind athletes of new jersey and Mm -hmm. um the combination of like sharon gunderman and uh laurel king and Mm -hmm. uh patty eggensteiner and uh cindy simon uh, you know um and a whole bunch of other people got me you know kind of called me back on the old landline phone you know yeah those those landline phones (laughs) and they and they they kept calling me and talking to me about the sports and the activities available for blind athletes through ABA Mm -hmm. and J. And I was like, all right, this is cool. But I I still am a little skeptical months go by. And I finally, I'm like, okay, I was like, okay, fine. I'll just try this goal ball thing. Right. I'll just just try it, whatever. So my mom took me to West orange in October of uh, 1995 for practice. And that is one of the, one of the pivotal parts of my life that changed my, my course. It changed who I was. It changed, 
I always say it gave me vision that I never had mm-hmm. because in that moment, I, 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 I learned and I saw that I was creating my own stereotypes about my own disability. Cause I didn't know, you know, like right. when I walked in that gym and met, um, the athletes that I met and the coaches, I was like, wow, these folks are, they're number one, they're blind, vision impaired, like myself. And mm-hmm. they're, they're number one, they're good athletes. Number two, they're successful in life. Like they were teachers, they were lawyers, they were, they were professionals. And I had never seen any of that before. So yeah. um, it was a major eye-opening experience to me to meet successful um, blind and visually impaired individuals. And then to, to meet Sharon, who, um, you know, she is like a, a, another mom to me, but she taught me that, you know, helped teach me the sport and, and encouraged me to keep doing it, you know, and, yeah. and, uh, it, you know, all the people that, you know, have really changed my course for the good. I, I met so many of them on that first practice and it was, it was very hard at first to play goalball because I had been told all my life, you know, use your vision, use your vision. And now in right. goalball, they, they took that away. Yeah. And so, <laughs> it took time to like hone into that tactual sense and the auditory sense. Mm -hmm. I I had them, but I had to like really hone in on them and and use them. Um, And so I was uh, very fortunate to have so many supportive people to help me to embrace those, those skills and enhance them. And again, after that first practice, again, my eyes were opened and my vision was changed and all for the good. Wow. Wow. That, I mean, that's, that's quite the, it's quite the journey. I mean, like, I mean, so you go to, you go to this, 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 you know, this goalball practice in, in like 1995, you, you start to learn goalball and then, you know, I, I mean, like you, I mean, I, it, it's, it's really funny because we, I've talked a lot with, um, you know, with, with your teammates and there, there really was, it, it, it seems like there was this big resistance to, you know, to goalball, but, you know, for, for some reason, every single one of you just, you, you wound up going from, I don't know if I, this is really a sport to like, I mean, you guys just have this passion and love for it. Like what, can you put your finger on it? What, what does make it so special? I, I think it's, it's again, you know, being able to do a competitive, a competitive sport with your peers. Yeah you know, um, and, uh, just it's, it's also such a dynamic sport, honestly, like it's, it's, it's up, it's fast paced. It's, um, you know, thinking on your feet, it's, it just kind of lures you in, honestly, like at first you're you're maybe like, what's going on, but like, you know, the movement of the ball and the defense and the, and the, just the precision it takes to play. I mean, it's, it just, it just lures you into this. It's a competitive, intense, dynamic sport. For sure, wow. So, I mean, so so you, you start you, you you start learning goalball. You start playing, um, and then you go to you go to Sydney, and you you win a medal yes. in discus. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so did did you go to Sydney both for track and field and for goalball, or just just for track and field? And, and did you not start pursue like when did you start pursuing the the Paralympic level of goalball as well. Um, I did go to Sydney for both track and field and goalball. Okay. And um, well, with goalball, I was very, um, I was, I was very fortunate to have uh, picked up the game pretty quickly. And yeah. so um, my first, I was invited to a USA national team training camp in March of 1996. So. Okay. Within a few months of uh, playing competitively, I, I got I got invited to a camp in Colorado Springs, and okay. they were prepping for the Atlanta Games. Uh. Um, and so, um, I don't honestly remember exactly when they named the team for Atlanta, but I was an alternate in '96, so I didn't go. But oh I, wow! I was, yeah, I was an alternate, which was honestly very good. Like I wasn't ready to go. I wasn't yeah. ready to have enough experience by any means. So it was a really good growing experience for me. Um, in that I got, to, you know, I knew after 96, I was like, I'm going to, I, I'm going to do everything I can to make the next team for Sydney, you know? So, um, so I, I knew once, I mean, once I went to a national team training camp, like that was, that was huge meeting other athletes from all around the U S and, you know, there was quite a few veterans, 
um, was, was very helpful. You know, um, Jen Armbruster has played a, a huge role in, in my life as well. Um, I've been very fortunate to have her and, and her family as well. They have really embraced me as part of their family. Um, but yeah, I, I basically kind of got into competitive goalball through that avenue. And then at the time, again, I was doing track and field in high school. And then I went to college and pursued uh, the field events where I did discus, shot put, and actually learned how to throw the hammer, which was super oh, exciting. I okay. love the hammer. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I, I was doing track and field in college as well as like, uh, you know, training for goalball and, uh, and yeah, I went to the trials, actually Asia Miller and I, we, we did a lot of this together because she w- had the same journey as I did with uh, okay. going to the trials. And then we both went to Sydney as dual sport athletes. So, oh. um, and we both medaled. She, she took a bronze in discus in her uh, visual class. And I took a silver in my uh, visual class. Wow. And, and then you guys just, I mean, you guys just kept rolling on and, you know, now you're, now you're going to your, your sixth games. I mean, so yes. you've, you've been to, you've been, I mean, uh, let's go through them. You got, you gone to Sydney, Athens, Beijing, yep. London, Rio, and now, and now Tokyo. Uh, yep. I mean, it, it, I mean, that's a, that's a long time of competing and staying at, at this level is there a memory that that kind of stands out to you that you know uh, you know it could be a favorite memory or or one that you really you know learned a lot about yourself you know and what what are what are a couple of memories in that 20 plus year career now that that stands out to you uh that's a great question you know i mean there are there are so many memories that have um, that have, that have, that have honestly changed who I am and our experiences rather. Um, and I always, uh, the first one I always tell people is, you know, the first time in Sydney, when we walked into opening ceremonies, like walking in with, uh, as part of the team USA delegation, um, into the stadium is just to hear, you know, to hear the roar of the crowd, you know, when they announced the United States of America, when you walk in, oh man, it is, it is just, it's just such a, exhilarating feeling you know just yeah. to, to re- be representing your country and you're you know you're wearing you know the opening ceremonies gear and uh it's just an amazingly proud feeling you know um and to to have some veterans around me at that time with um actually my one of my good friends maggie ostrowski and then patty with patty eggensteiner was there and jen armbruster yep. they they were just um, really great mentors for me at my first game so um that was definitely a really just great memory you know um another memory or experience honestly that really changed uh changed who i am a little bit is our um our gold medal victory in in beijing in 2008 um i was the starting center and it's it's a it's pretty intense to be out there in you know a stadium full of of people and oh um, yeah I, I definitely was very nervous and the semifinal game was a little bit rough in the first, like, I don't even like minute or two, we were down three, nothing and three balls had gone off my hands as, as a center. And I was like, Whoa, you know, but Asia and Jen were behind me and they, they, they ended up, you know, scoring three goals. We went into overtime and we won in overtime, but, um, being able to embrace, um, the, the pressure, um, and the, you know, the, the, experience of being out there in a, in a pretty, you know, in a really tough game, <laughs> um, changed who I was. Like I, I gained a lot of confidence from that to be able to embrace that pressure, that nervousness and harness it to, to control it really. Um, yeah. and then us ending, you know, we played China for the gold medal and beat them six to five. Oh. Uh, that, that was, that was, that was a really amazing memory. Um, we had, we just, we, we were in sync and, you know, to be able to stand on top of the podium and hear the, the national anthem is, is always, it's just a really great, you know, it's a, it's an amazing memory, you know, proud, proud Absolutely. memory. Um, Absolutely. You know, and also in 2008, my, um, my husband, Jake was there as a spectator. And so he was there ah. and, in the crowd to, to, to see us win that, that medal. So that was really cool. Um, you know, and then in 2012, 
Jake was uh, the assistant coach. So he got to celebrate. I got to be with him when he got to be at his first Paralympic games. Yep. You know? Yeah. So let, yeah, let's, let's, let's chat about that. Uh, so like Jake is, you know, Jake's your husband and he's the, and he's your, and he's your coach. Yes. Um, how, how does that, you know, you know, how, how is that dynamic? You know, cause uh, I mean, like, you know, I, I've known, uh, <laughs> like, like I've known people who are coached by their significant others before, and it can either be, you know, really great, or you could be constantly butting heads and like, it's like, re- really, really darling, you're not going to tell me what to do. Um, like, how, how do you guys manage, uh, manage that um, situation and, and that, um, you know, you know, almost separating the, the work from the, um, you know, that, that training and coaching aspect from the, from the personal, you know, side of life as well. Well, I mean, you said it, we do, we do keep things separate, you know, when we're, we're at, you know, we're at practice, um, and, uh, you know, at at a training, you know, then Mm -hmm. our, our relationship is as coach and athlete, you know, when we're, at home, it's, it's, you know, husband and wife or honestly mom and dad because of our, you know, of our son. So, um, you know, we've, we've been, um, in this, in this role, in these roles for so long now that we've, we've, we've had a chance to kind of, you know, to fine tune them. And, uh, I feel really blessed that he's a part of, um, in my life as my, not only my, my husband, my best friend, but my coach, you know, and, I'm, I know there are times when he maybe gives me feedback and I'm not the most uh, receptive, but yeah. I also, you know, I, I'm also, I'm very emotional and I, he's, he's in the, he's giving me the right feedback to make me a better player, you know? Um, Absolutely. So, yeah, I think it's, I think it's pretty cool. We've, we've really worked hard at our, at our relationships and, uh, and are wearing our different hats at different times, you know, but yeah. uh, again, it's, it's very, I feel very blessed. You know, he uh, will be in Tokyo, you know, and yep. uh, I know he's very proud of, um, of our team and that, yep. and that's, that's great. Yeah. You guys have, um, it really seems that there's been quite the, the shift in, 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 you know, in big time changes the last, uh, the last few years, um, you, you know, you guys moving to, uh, moving to Turnstone and, you know, there, there just seems to be, uh, you know, e- even though you have, you've had tremendous success, um, you know, with, you know, with medals and, you know, in Sydney and, you know, standing on top of the podium in, in Beijing and, you know, get, you know, earning a bronze in Rio and, and all, all of these, you know, successes. Um, how, how did you, how did you guys manage to turn that intensity and, and find that, that extra gear, these last, you know, few years and make that shift to being an even better team. Uh, you know, just cause it, you know, just from what it sounds like, you know, in, in talking with everybody, I mean, you got, there's been a, I mean, you guys have, have really knuckled down here the last few years. Uh, how, how, you know, talk me through that, that entire process. And like, was it a, was it a big change for you or have you always just been, you know, on top of your game? I mean, I definitely had to make a lot of changes um, uh, as I've, I've seen the game evolve, you know, from Mm -hmm. when I started playing in 1995 to now the game has changed so much for the good. I mean, it is, it's just, it's different. It's faster. It's more dynamic. Um, You need to, you need to train to be on the elite level now, you know, you need to consistently train. Um, Whereas before I, I, like we were training, but it was a different type of training. And now it's, it's, you need to be consistent, you know? Right. Right. Um, and so I definitely needed to make a lot of changes to keep, to keep up with the game. And I've wanted to make those changes. Um, moving to, to Fort Wayne was, was, was wonderful. It was, uh, it's, it's been such a great move. Um, you know, Fort Wayne is a, is a goal ball, goal ball town, USA. And yeah. um, to be uh, here with Turnstone as they've become an uh, Olympic and Paralympic training center has been, has been really, really proud like, and wonderful for me to watch. Um, but, you know, having, a- ha- having access to a facility like Turnstone and the Goldwall mm-hmm. Center of Excellence mm-hmm. has given us some really important tools that 
we are using to, to be better. Um, and um, the athletes, the, the ladies have made a lot of sacrifices to, you know, to make sure they're here to do the training. And if they're not here training in their home environments, so we, so we can put out our, our 110% in Tokyo. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you actually also work for, you know, for, for Turnstone. What, what do you do? Um, what, do, what do you do for Turnstone? And just, you know, talk to us a little bit about, you know, what, you know, what Turnstone uh, does for those people that, that don't know, um, you know, why, you know, why we, uh, you know, why we, why they're the kind of the host of the, <laughs> the Cobalt Center of Excellence as well. Sure. Um, I work in the finance department. I am an accounting assistant um, okay. and I work part time. So um, my, uh, my, my supervisors, bosses have been very, very awesome about working, um, working with my training schedule, which as yeah. you know, Kyle is, uh, <laughs> oof, you know, <laughs> it's training, a little hectic. <laughs> it's a little hectic. And I would like to say that every week is the same, but especially right now, every week is not the same. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> but I'm, uh, I'm very blessed to have a very supportive, um, staff that are, mm. are great with flexibility. Yep. Um, and so I, I, I do a lot of, um, uh, processing of like purchase orders and payments and such. Um, this is actually, I didn't go to college for this. So they taught me all the skills, um, oh. which is, which is great. Yeah. I actually have a, a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. Oh, okay. <laughs> so but I've different. had a lot of different <laughs> jobs in my life and, yep. um, it is a little different you know, but I do really like numbers. And, um, and so they, they saw my resume, my previous employment and history, and they offered to teach me the skills I needed. And it's been a oh. really wonderful match. Um, Turnstone is, is family to us. I mean, yeah. we work with a wonderful staff here and they all are so supportive and they're a part of my journey and our team's journey to Tokyo. So Absolutely. It's, it's great. Um, and so, you know, Turnstone is a, uh, not for profit, and basically they serve um, very populations from like pediatrics, from children all the way to adults. There are several um, therapies that they offer here, um, with like occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech therapy. Um, they have uh, like adult day services um, for individual disabilities. They have the whole like fit fitness and wellness component where they have a fully accessible gym, a therapy pool. <laughs> Um, they have the sports and rec programs as well, where they offer like power, um, power soccer and uh, uh, wheelchair, uh, wheelchair quad rugby, okay. basketball. I'm, I'm only hitting the highlights. I'm probably missing yeah. a lot of things, but oh, um, totally, it's all good. You know, they have also a, a, um, a specific memory care unit for folks that are experiencing dementia. Um, <laughs> they also have a child care here as well, which our son went through, um, which is okay. wonderful. It's a fully inclusive child care center, oh, and, wow. um, which is wonderful. Yeah. So the pediatric program is very large here and they, 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 they help, they, they support a lot of people in the community. Um, and that's across the board. So, um, Turnstone is, is, a, is very much so a part like a heart like I think they're like the heart of Fort Wayne here uh, I mean I, I mean and, and there's I mean there's I mean there's a reason why you know uh, you know I mean goalball is so community centric and you know turnstone is such a a foundation of that of that community I mean it, I mean it, it's just I mean I you know I, I you know I just I, it's it's amazing to see where where you guys have, have come, you know, since we started, since the program got started uh, just a few years ago there. Um, so no, it's, it's really, really impressive to, to, to see um, how much it's meant to you and your, your family, especially. But, um, but I want to, I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about like, so you've had this, this really long storied career. You've, you know, you, you've, you know, you've got the whole, the whole collection of medals you've got, you know, gold, silver, bronze, you know, you've had super high successes. You've had, you know, some, some lows H has your definition of success changed over the years or, you know, what, what is, you know, what, what did success mean to you early on in your career? And, and like, you know, what, what's going to be a successful Tokyo for you? 
I think um, success early in my career was very, um, was very simple. It was literally just wins and losses, literally, you know, um, although I had been a, a, you know, a track and field athlete, I was an individual sport. So everything was on me and how I performed was on me. And so I, I kind of had to learn to, um, to be a, a, a team, a team athlete, honestly. Um, and so in, in learning how to be a team athlete, like a team oriented athlete, I definitely learned about success. And for me, like it, it is, it is success really is a journey. And, um, I try to find success in everything I do with also looking at the reality of, there is not always success, but you know, there is, you're going to make mistakes, you know, and it's about, um, minimizing your mistakes and maximizing, uh, the effort and the ability and the talent. So, um, I, I feel like, you know, um, th- right now I feel like, uh, success is happening where I feel like our team is very prepared. Um, we've worked very hard and, uh, I feel like that, you know, again, looking at success as a journey, this part of the journey is, has been successful. We have worked very hard. We have dedicated uh, lots of time and mental, physical, emotional energy, you name it, you know, For sure. and we have persevered through a, a pandemic, you know, it's, it's yeah. been a different type of training at times. And, um, I feel like, uh, thankfully with the support of Turnstone and their staff, they have, a, they have given us the opportunity to take advantage of the the time that we, the extra time we've had to prepare and be a better team. So, um, the six, we are being successful right now. And, uh, you know, obviously success for Tokyo would would be the podium. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh man, Lisa, I've got, I've, I mean, I, I've got so many more questions, uh, to ask you, but one of the, one of our favorite things to do, uh, here is we do like to throw it to, uh, the fans. And so I'm going to, I'm going to turn it over to, I'm going to turn it over to producer extraordinaire Bill Kellick, and he's going to uh, dip in and, and give us a couple of a uh, couple of fan questions that I'm sure have been coming in. So, uh, Bill, uh, well, what are the fans asking of Lisa? Sure, Lisa. We have uh, one or two from Ernst Kreisel. He uh, regarding your longevity in the sport. So I'll I'll give you the first one, and then possibly okay. a follow up depending on how you answer the first one. Okay. So Ernst wants to know how long are you going to continue your career and is it possible watching you playing in Paris in 2024? Uh, good question, Ernst. Um, I'm not really sure, honestly, what, what the future holds. Um, I'm just looking toward Tokyo right now and just kind of seeing how, seeing what happens. Uh, I still love to compete. And I, I still feel like I have a lot of passion to do so. So I, I'm not ready to make any sort of decision as to, you know, ending my career yet. Okay, so his follow-up question then, and this will be the final one. Do you have a fixed date where you say, after that, there is no way that I'll compete again? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I'd, I'd like to say, honestly, Paris would... <laughs> <laughs> Paris if I made it to Paris that would m- most definitely probably be all you know um that's a it's a long it's a long time but with the pandemic you know Paris is only three years away now so I don't know we'll see <laughs> it is it's not it's not too far Lisa and and you've uh I mean you know you you still have the same passion I gotta I gotta say you know, uh, of all, um, of all the, of all the cities that you've, um, that you visited, you know, over the course of your career, I mean, you, I mean, you've traveled a bunch internationally, you've competed in, you know, five different, you know, five different countries just for the Paralympics. Um, you know, just from a, like a, from a city or a tourism standpoint, like which, which was your, which was your favorite Paralympics that you've, uh, competed in thus far? Oh, that's a tough question, Kyle. Cause again, I find that each Paralympics, I really, there's something I loved about it, you know, like, totally. you know, Sydney was my first, you know, yeah. and we climbed and we climbed the, um, infamous Sydney, the bridge. So oh, like, yeah. that was super cool, you know? Yeah. Um, and you know, I mean, Greece, Greece was completely unique and, uh, yeah. going to like the Parthenon. I mean, that's like history and just for sure 
you know, and then Beijing, we, we won, we, we, um, uh, we, we climbed the Great Wall of China, another like amazing experience. Um, and London, London was just a very amazing city. They did a, they did a really great job. I, um, I enjoyed sightseeing. We did, we, yeah. we did a lot of sightseeing um, there because we had been eliminated. So okay. they're, they're just the, I've always loved London. I've gone there um, outside of competitions. So mm-hmm. London's so historic, you know, um, so, you know, Big Ben and just, oh, there's so much there, right? Yeah. And then, you know, Rio going to the Jesus Christ statue. I mean, that, that was, that was really amazing. And it sits out over, I guess, by the water you know, um, and, uh, oh wait, yeah, it's by the water. Sorry. I was getting okay. that in uh, sugar loaf mixed up, but they're, <laughs> I think they're kind of similar in like where they sit, but you know, those each, each Paralympics I've gone to has been, has its own great memories. So it's hard yeah. to pick one, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, oh, I mean, it's, I, I will say I, that that's probably the one thing that I'm, uh, you know, uh, you know, with, with Tokyo, it's, we're not going to get as many pride no chances to do any uh exploring of, of the city itself um but yeah, yeah but I, I think we're still going to make a lot of uh a lot of good memories in the village that's for that's for sure to, to the extent we can <laughs> yes i agree uh, i completely agree i am ready to go have some fun and explore the village and you know absolutely just- absolutely absolutely all right lisa we're gonna uh, we're gonna dive into just a, a a few fun um you know you know fun lightning round questions um okay. you know so first and foremost what's your uh, what's your goal ball number three three number three it is a magic number after all it is <laughs> yep yep all right so i mean you, I know that, you know, you guys have been working with, uh, with, the, you know, the dietitians, you guys have been like, you know, you know, getting everything dialed, but I mean, come on, Lisa Tchaikovsky has a favorite post-match treat. I know, she, I know she does. So when you guys are standing on top of the podium and it's time to celebrate, what, what's, what's the favorite, what's the favorite, uh, treat that you're going to celebrate with? Uh, I love ice cream. <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> yeah, I love ice cream. Yeah. Any particular flavor? Uh, I mean, you know, Ben and Jerry's has got a few that I really okay. enjoy. <laughs> okay. All right. But uh, you know, ice cream. Oh, that that's always good. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, do you have a favorite like music genre or, or band or group that you listen to? Uh, I probably listen to a little bit of everything, honestly. I mean, I, I do have uh, some passion for the '80s because uh, okay. you, know, uh, you know I love the '80s. But you know, I, totally. I, I keep my uh, music taste pretty open. Okay. Nice, nice. Uh, dogs or cats? Dogs. Dogs. Do you guys have a family dog? We have a family pet. Yep. She just turned okay. twelve yesterday. Her name is Sophia. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Does yeah. the little does the uh, does jay like to uh you know is is he uh is he a good kid in that he takes care of the uh family pet or is he uh or does the the taking care of the family pet fall to mom and dad um jay does some stuff with sophia he he really loves sophia a lot so um he'll he'll walk with us and everything so awesome you know he's a he he loves her awesome awesome uh you a coffee or a tea drinker coffee coffee oh how do you yeah, take it yeah. a little well okay depends um okay all right, <laughs> so all right, all right. During, during the training week a little bit of almond milk but on okay. the weekends I do splurge a touch with some like creamer like either you know french vanilla or okay you know some kind of creamer yep yeah totally totally uh give it the choice chocolate or vanilla chocolate chocolate all right all right um I could probably guess this one, but, um, are you, do you like to, uh, are you, are you a stay up late person or, uh, do you prefer getting up early? Uh, I mean, I, I kind of stay up late just to yeah. get stuff done. And then I also yeah. get up early to get stuff done. So <laughs> mom life, you know, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yes. 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 Hashtag mom life. Yes. Um, yep, and training life, you know, that's totally. when I get cardio done. So yeah. Totally. <laughs> totally. Sparkling or plain water? Plain. 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 Yeah. 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 It it doesn't seem like the uh 
yeah, the, the, the gold ball team, you guys, you guys are not, not fans of the sparkling water. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised, but that's all good. Yeah. All good. So, I, I mean, aside from goal ball and, and track and field, um, like, do you have a favorite, you know, non-sporting activity or like, you know, what, what do you, what do you like to do when, you know, when it's time to just shut your brain off of, off of sport? I like to read, you know, I like to listen to books. Okay. Um, I like Any to play particular with, favorites? Uh, I like the, the crime novels. So okay. um, like, you know, John Grisham, he's one of my yeah. favorites. Um, okay. David Baldacci. Oh uh, yeah. Good stuff. Yep. CJ box. Another good okay. one. I like, um, but yeah, I like to read. And, you know, honestly, I, it, when I'm not thinking about goal ball or playing goal ball or, mm -hmm. or work, I like to just, I like to hang out with my son. I mean, he's totally, he's growing up so quick. So, um, yeah. you know, I, I just, uh, it's crazy, you know, but it, he's a good kid and I love to hang out with him. That's awesome. Do you guys have any, uh, it, I mean, you, you've done so much and been so many places uh, what are, what's another one or two like bucket list items that, that you'd really like to get crossed off your list at some point? Uh, Ooh, good question. Um, Hmm. Uh, you know, just maybe some more, uh, you know, leisure traveling, I, I yeah. <laughs> you know, um, any particular I, place that you like, you're, you're itching to itching to get to, I mean, cause you seem you, you really like the, uh, you really like the history of the, you know, just the traveling yeah. aspect. I do I like the history. I want to, I want to be able to take Jay to some of the places that I've been for the Paralympics. Cause then yeah. <laughs> we can actually uh, spend more time sightseeing and I can just kind of show him where some of the places that I've had some really, you know, life-changing experiences. So, you know, it'd be cool to take him down to Australia and yeah, uh, and, and to Europe and over to, you know, to Asia and to China and in Japan, you know, I mean, yeah, there's just, there's so much out there. And even just in the U S there's so much history. Like, I feel like we, sure. we just need to travel more and, you know, take them to like to Washington, DC, you know, Colorado uh -huh. Springs, uh, yeah. you know, Boston, Philly. Uh, I don't know. There's so many places I do want to take him, but traveling, uh, that's awesome. you know, traveling w would be great when, when, when it makes sense, you know? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we've been, ha I've actually been having a lot of fun with, uh, with, with this question. I've, uh, I've been, I've been tossing it out to, uh, our last few guests and that is like, okay, like uh, you're the, you're the starting center on, uh, on a goal ball team and you get to have two celebrities be, be your wing players. Um, what two celebrities are you choosing? Hi, I don't know. Um, are they like, are they like, uh, like sports celebrities? Or... A, a, any, any, you can, any celebrity oh. you want. It could be either someone that you think like, I got to have this celebrity because I know they, they're going to help me win. Or I got to have the celebrity on my team just because I want to meet them. Or, you know, it could be, you know, a, anything you want, you know, you take it, mm -hmm. you take it how you want. Wow. That's a great question. Um, well, it would be, it would be super cool to, to meet Michael Phelps and he's pretty tall. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that would be helpful. Um, and then I'm really bad with like celebrities. Yeah. Um, hmm. I don't know, this is a tough one. <laughs> I'm, I'm just so bad with celebrities. Ah. <laughs> um, I was trying to think of another athlete. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I might, I, I have to think about that one. That's a good question. Right. Though. Yeah, no, I, I just, I just think it's, I, you know, I, I just, I think it's funny because you know, we all, um, you know, because we all have like those, you know, those, those people that we just, like, we just want to, we want to meet or the like, people that we've looked up to or that we've modeled our, um, you know, our, our game after or anything like that. Um, but, uh, you know, and that actually brings up a, another question, like, you know, early on in your career did you did you have a, a, a an olympic or a paralympic role model that you that you really just looked up to more than any other that kind of helped mold and shape your game into to what it's become yeah i mean i definitely i i had i had two um mm -hmm. patty eggensteiner and jen armbruster were the two um role models that really helped shape me and helped me you know, you know, kind of work through adversity when I encountered it and 
you know, taught me how to be a better, a better athlete and a better person. Like they, yeah. they definitely helped mold me, the two of them in different ways. So, sure. um, I'm very thankful that those two, um, were a part of my life and, and even to, to kind of this day, those two are still part of my life, you know? Yeah. Um, and so very fortunate. Awesome. Well, we're going to, we're going to go ahead and start to, to wrap it down. Just, uh, okay. just a couple, just a couple other, um, just a couple other things that, uh, you know, I want to, I want to get to, um, yeah, I, I first want to, you know, just, uh, I mean, you, you had such an amazing team around you, uh, that is, that's kind of helped, you know, get you to where you are, uh, today. And that's, you know, going to continue to help you, you know, forward in, in life. So, um, you know, if there's anyone that you, you know, that you, you know, haven't gotten to, you know, thank, uh, you know, already, you know, I just, I, I want to give you an opportunity to give any, any special shout outs, um, you know, just for, uh, you know, just like a handful of shout outs to, to people that have just mental, meant a lot to you that, um, have helped you along the way. Well, I, you know, with shout outs, I, I always like to put out there my, my family, you know, my, yeah. my family, um, my, my parents and my brothers and their wives. And then honestly, like my, my, just my, my husband, Jake's yeah. family as well. I mean, um, and his brother, like we couldn't do all the traveling that we do without the support of our family, you know, sure. um, who, you know, come in and help us, you know, help, help us, you know, by, you know, watching Jay and making sure he gets mm -hmm. to school and everything. Um, so our families have been really pivotal in helping us to be able to, 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 you know, to travel and to focus, um, or, you know, uh, when they, during the qualifier here in Fort Wayne, um, we had family here and it just helped, you know, like us not to have to worry about anything, you know? Yeah. Um, so our family has really been so helpful and supportive, um, friends. I have friends all over the country <laughs> that yep. I'm not, I'm not going to list everybody. Um, yeah exactly but i've had i have friends that have just done so much for me um and jake and have supported us be it with uh you know just just shout outs with text messages or you know just help you know just been there for everything um i will give a special shout out to our good friends in pittsburgh maggie and bob they're yeah. they're always there and they were planning on being in tokyo but uh with no spectators they're gonna mm -hmm. be at home in pittsburgh but Maggie's also a previous Paralympian. She's a retired ah. Paralympian. So um, she is uh, always wanting to, you know, always involved with what's happening. So, yep. but there are, again, I, I don't want to shout out everybody because there's just so many people that have helped us along our journey, you know, for and sure. continue to help us. And I'm just thankful for everyone's support and just couldn't, we couldn't have done it without them. Absolutely. And then, um, how, how can we follow your, um, you know, your journey? Um, are, are you on, uh, are you on social media? How, how can we best keep up with, uh, how can we best keep up with, with Lisa and, and Jake and Jay and uh, like all the, all the stuff that you guys get up to? All right. That's a great question. And, uh, honestly, until like 48, 48 hours ago, I didn't have any social media, but um, oh wow, I uh, I just so started... so what you're saying is we need to get you some fans. Yeah, I, I, well, <laughs> we need to get some fans, and I need to learn how to use uh, Instagram. I just started an Instagram account. So, awesome. Um, I'm on Instagram, Lisa Chikowski okay. three. Um, okay. And so I, uh, as I uh, get some education, I'll be honest. I've asked my teammates um, to help me because I am. <laughs> very unfamiliar with this platform to be honest so uh, yep. it's gonna take me a, a few days to get going with it but yep. Yep. um i plan on doing some posting on instagram and sharing my journey both um you know as a paralympic athlete and yep. you know as a mom and a wife yep. so it'll it, it should be some really good posts because there's so much to that i want to share with people um that, you know that I'm, I'm looking forward to doing i just need to to learn the platform. <laughs> so awesome. Awesome. Um, well, I, I could tell you, you got a great team to help you do that. So <laughs> I do. I'm, I'm really blessed. Like I am so thankful for our team. Um, oh my gosh. I love them all. And they yep. have made me uh, such a stronger person and smarter person because of, yep. of who they are. So I'm just so thankful for all of them. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. All right, Lisa, I just, I got one final question. It's something I like to ask all, all of mm -hmm. my guests. Um, and that is, how do you want to be remembered? 
that's a that's another good insightful question. Um, I I want to be remembered as somebody who thinks of others first and always puts out 110 percent so um and so I guess that's like a little bit of like a legacy question you know I want to, yeah. to I want people to, to to know like I I I want to remember as someone who's also gives back you know yep. um and uh I the, the people that have changed my life you know my mentors I want to be a mentor for somebody else for other people for other um, disabled athletes, be it blind or visually impaired or other disabilities. Mm -hmm. Like I want to be mm -hmm. a mentor, um, for others to pursue their mm -hmm. dreams and overcome adversities and, mm -hmm. and everything. So that's, that's how I want to be remembered. I love it. I love it. And, you know, Hey, kudos to you for being the first one to actually, uh, nail down why I actually asked that question. It, yeah, it is a, like, it's a, you know, I, I think as, as athletes and as people, we all, we all leave a legacy and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, you know, that I, I, I love that you want to, to leave that kind of, that kind of legacy. So I, I, I it's, I, you know, oh my gosh, I, I, I gotta say, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a Lisa Tchaikovsky fan and I know we've Woo definitely made some, I know we've made some more Lisa Tchaikovsky fans out there. Uh, so guys go get, let's, let's get, uh, let's get Lisa's followers on, uh, on Instagram. <laughs> Lisa's on the gram now, guys, we gotta, we gotta start following her. We gotta get her some followers. <laughs> Ooh, thank you. <laughs> so, yeah. So at, at Lisa Tchaikovsky three, that, then as always guys go follow the, uh, the USA women's goalball team. Uh, if you, if you haven't already, uh, I sincerely hope you guys are following USABA on, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube guys, we're always putting out more content. Um, oh man, uh, Lisa, this has been, this has been so much fun. I, I mean, I am, uh, I'm, I'm so glad we had the opportunity to, uh, to talk today. And, uh, I, I just, I can't wait to see you go out and, uh, and just rock it in Tokyo in just a few short weeks. Thank you. Thanks for having me. When do you, um, when do you go to Tokyo and when do you compete? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> so I, I actually uh, I'll get to Tokyo on the twenty second, um, okay. and then my and then my my competition is on uh, Tokyo time. It'll be the morning of the twenty eighth. So so yeah uh, yeah. So I'll be uh, I'll be heading to Hawaii uh, for a, a little pre pre training camp. Um, nice. You know, uh, here in a, in about a week and a half, and then uh, we'll go from uh, Hawaii to Tokyo. Uh, and, uh, so hopefully I, uh, hopefully I run into you in the village at some point and, uh, we'll, uh, have to have to grab a, at least a quick photo or something to, to put up on, uh, both of our Instagrams. <laughs> Absolutely. By then I should know how to post the photo. So. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. We'll, we'll make it happen. All right, you guys, we have come to the end of another blind spot where we talk with blind athletes reaching excellence. Ah, oh, man, we have, you know. Lisa has definitely reached, you know, incredible heights of excellence. Uh, I, I have a feeling she's, she's nowhere close to being done. Uh, so as always, guys, uh, you know, keep an eye on the USABA social media channels. Uh, you know, if you haven't already signed up for our newsletter, we've got so much stuff going on, uh, stuff in the pipeline that we're really excited to tell you about. Uh, in the coming weeks, um, you know, besides the Paralympics. <laughs> so, uh, so keep an eye on the newsletter, keep an eye on the social media channels. Um, if you want to learn more about our 100 Days to Tokyo campaign, uh, visit usaba.donordrive.com. And guys, don't forget, we've got another uh, Blind Spot interview coming up on Wednesday uh, at 1 p.m. or 1, 15, 1 or 1 15 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and that'll be with, uh, with, uh, Lisa's other six time Paralympic, uh, teammate, Asia Miller. So we're looking forward to, uh, talking with Asia on, uh, on Wednesday. So, uh, so put it on your calendars, uh, but until then, you guys always keep reaching for your own version of excellence. We'll see you soon. Thank you.